Storybook Land is a small family-owned amusement park located in South Jersey, about 20 minutes from Ocean City. It's in a place called Egg Harbor Township. It's located right off a of main road. And right away, I gotta say, this is probably one of the strangest parks I've ever been to. As you can probably guess by the name, the common theme here is classic children fairy tales. And I'm not talking like Disney stuff. I'm talking things that are in the public domain, commonly known stories. And they have this represented in many different displays throughout the park with several rides mixed in in between. It's really geared towards kids, and I can see how it can be a big draw for them. It's really kind of a cool place. This is going to be my full review of the park based off of the one experience that I had going. Now, I know that I am not the target audience for this park, and nor did I go here with any kids, so I probably didn't get the same enjoyment out of it as maybe some families would, but I'll do my best to cover everything so you can decide for yourself whether you should go and visit. Now, when you arrive here, you're greeted by this small white castle that acts as the front gate. It's kind of shoved between many different businesses. It's like random if you're like like driving down the road you're like oh wait there's a theme park what the heck it is a gated admission you can't just pay per ride and walk around for free it's about $30 a ticket which I'll be honest is a bit more than I was expecting for a place like this I think that's gonna be a little steep for you coaster enthusiasts who are just gonna want to come here to ride the one roller coaster especially when you can pay a similar price 20 minutes down the road at Playland's Castaway Cove where you get some much more thrilling additions this place is not really about the rides we're only talking about a handful of attractions here I mean you have bubbles the coaster there's a swing ride, some antique cars, which are actually pretty awesome. There's a train that goes around the park, a small little drop tower, a little Ferris wheel, a carousel, a construction themed car ride, which is pretty well themed. And there's like a Zamperla, what looks like a mini Nebula's ride. There might be one or two others, but I mean, we're not talking about a ton of crazy attractions here. The coolest thing about this is the walk around displays. This place is actually pretty intricate. In terms of land, they have quite a bit of space here. A lot more than I was expecting. You can actually fit a decent sized roller coaster here if you wanted. When we were visiting, the one attraction that we talked about that would actually do great here is one of those Skyline Attraction single rail kitty coasters. It could be like a step up from Bubbles. And if they went with the dueling model, they could give it like a really cool fairy tale themed. And Skyline has the ability to theme the track to whatever you want. So I feel like this is exactly the type of place that could really benefit from something like that. But I'm not sure what their budget is on big attractions. Again, this is a family owned and operated place. When we were exiting the park, the owner was just out there just casually thanking people for coming, opening the doors for people. The service was really nice. It's not a ginormous team that operates this park. It's one of those places where everyone knows everyone, which is cool. You know, it gives it a very different vibe from one of those big corporate parks. Some other cool things about this place, you can bring your own food here. They have kind of like a main dining hall right in the center of the park and kind of when you walk in, you can get some food, which I thought was actually pretty reasonably priced compared to what some other parks will charge. But you can bring whatever food you want here. I also thought it was cute whenever you throw something out, the trash cans have these different faces on them and they talk to you whenever you put something in them. They say, thank you for not being a litter bug. It was very reminiscent of Efteling, what they do there. I imagine that was a huge inspiration point. It was really cool to see another park do something like that, especially here in the United States. That's pretty rare. The only other place that I could think of that has something similar is the Give Kids the World Village. And obviously that's not open to the public. Another attraction that they have here are several different farm animals. Some of the deer and geese were located like all the way in the back. I imagine there's a good amount of people who completely miss them, don't even ever see them because they're like tucked back there. And the sheep was all by himself as part of this display didn't have another friend in there and it wasn't a very big enclosure so honestly I feel like the park wouldn't suffer if the animals were taken away I don't think they really need them but that's just my opinion so let's talk about the main draw here which are those different display pieces all around the park and I think these kind of draw the line between pretty cool but also like a little creepy because whenever they have animatronics, they're very simple movements. Like you can press a button and then the head turns like left or right, or maybe the arms move and you like hear a voice. So we're not talking like Disney budget attractions here. And, and many of the displays just don't move at all. Like visually, they're very cool looking, but sometimes when you look at them, you're like, whoa, this is like a little weird. At least as an adult walking through this place, that was one of my thoughts. It certainly has its charm to it. Some displays are obviously better than others. But there were definitely a couple I'm not a huge fan of. Looking at you, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Yeah, just, uh, no. I don't like that at all. That's gonna give me nightmares. But I was impressed by the sheer amount of exhibits that they have. And how there's like a million pathways throughout the park that you can take to go see everything. Like, there's a lot here. And for the most part, I mean, they're pretty well kept. You can tell that a lot of them are fairly old. But it's not like they were falling apart or anything. 
You can tell that the park has been doing their best to maintain everything. So for that, I commend them, especially when you probably don't have a huge team of people to help keep this place running. To keep all the stuff going is pretty impressive, especially when you think about how big some of these are. I mean, when you walk in, you're greeted with a ginormous mother goose. Like you would probably need a crane if you wanted to go and fix the top of her head. So it was absolutely an interesting place to visit. I've actually been told the best time if you want to go here is during Christmas time. From what I've heard, that's like actually their most popular event because they put up all these Christmas lights. It's supposedly really beautiful. So who knows, maybe one day I'll come back for that. But I think to wrap things up, should you go here? I think it really depends on what you're looking for. If you have young kids, this is probably right up their alley. They're gonna enjoy it. If you don't have kids, you honestly probably don't need to go here. It's definitely not really meant for adults. I mean, I still got a kick out of walking around here, but at the core, it is a children's park. And I know that adults will have a different mindset walking around than the kids will. The kids will love the interactivity, how you can get all the different statues to move. There's little mazes, tunnels, playing areas, and attractions that they can all ride. And if you're an adult, you'll probably just be glad that you're not walking around here alone at night. Because yeah, that'd be pretty spooky. Honestly, one of the parks that reminded me most of was Enchanted Forest up in Oregon. At least comparing the two, I like that place a lot more. I mean, for one, it was a lot more immersive. Storybook Land feels like Enchanted Forest, but put on flat ground. It doesn't have the same charm, and I would say isn't even as interactive. But they both have the same kind of mentality and style that they went for. But I want to hear from you guys down in the comments below. What do you think of Storybook Land in New Jersey? If you've been here, what do you think of it? You can post all those thoughts down in the comments below. And of course, stay tuned for more park reviews here at Coaster Studios, and I'll see you next time.